Megadeth frontman Dave Mustaine and bassist David Ellefson have shared a few updates regarding the band's new material. Dave told GW. We have been working on new material for a few weeks now. All the band members are at home writing stuff and putting it in the same spot, keeping all the riffs centralized in one place. And anybody can access anybody's stuff. And then once we're done I'll start assembling everything. So, will we see new Megadeth music in 2019? Absolutely. For sure. A whole new record, I would say the chances are probably 95%. And at least one new song, I'd say it's 100%. No question. Meanwhile, Ellefson was asked by Metalwani whether Megadeth is planning to release new music in 2019. He replied. That's the goal. I think we learned with 2016's Dystopia that we're at a point in our career where we can still make really compelling new music, but it's also important to take our time and really make it as great as we possibly can. During a recent conversation with Full Metal Jackie, Dave Mustaine looked back on Megadeth's catalog, saying about the band's 1985 debut Killing Is My Business. And business is good. The very first record was so aggressive and you know what that was? It was revenge and anger, over my exit from Metallica. Then I started to get over the anger and started to have my own success and started to have people say, wow, you know what? This guy can actually play a guitar. Because with Lars Ulrich and James Hetfield and those guys going out of their way to say that I was temporary. I wasn't temporary. I wouldn't have been temporary if I hadn't slugged James. And them saying I'm not a good guitar player. Anybody with two ears knows that I'm not bad, I'm a good guitar player. Now, I'm not the best guitar player in the world, and I never said that. So, at that point was when I started to not worry about what other people said and just start writing. And I believe during, 1992's, Countdown to Extinction was when I started to have some. Started to feel some self-esteem. Because your self-esteem and ego are two totally different things. Most musicians have raging egos and no self-esteem at all. In his book called, I'm the Man, the story of that guy from Anthrax, Scott Ian touched on the matter of Dave Mustaine's firing from Metallica, sharing a few thoughts and memories from the old days. James Hetfield was actually the wallflower. He was quiet like Charlie Bennett with a good sense of humor and hadn't developed his rock star persona yet. He looked awkward around people, but when he was holding his guitar and screaming into the mic he was right at home. That was where he belonged, even though he never said anything on stage. That was all Dave. Mustaine was the real front man of the band. He did all the talking on stage and he had that rock star personality. He was also an out of control, mean drunk, but he had a sharp sense of humor. Lars Ulrich could be funny, too, and he could talk a ton of shit. He actually couldn't really play when they started. He learned by jamming along with James's songs and just got better as they went. It would be hard to imagine Lars in any other band, but he's the right drummer for Metallica. He was also the voice of the band from day one. If I were to single any of them out as someone who looked like he didn't belong, it would be Cliff, Burton. Anthrax and Metallica had a certain look, tight jeans, high top Nike or Converse sneakers, metal t-shirt, leather jacket, or denim over leather. And then there was Cliff and his bell bottoms, cowboy boots, REM t-shirt, and jean jacket decorated with Leonard Skinner and Misfits pins. From an archived 1987 interview with NME, we check out what Slayer's Jeff Hanman said when being asked. So Jeff, what attracts Slayer to Satanism? He said. It provides such extreme lyrics, all that anarchic violence, ripping people apart. We were kinda serious about it when we started, but now it's old hat. What were you serious about? We read a lot from the Satanic Bible. It's not quite the opposite of the normal Bible, a lot of its principles are just about being yourself, if you wanna do something you do it, if you wanna have affairs you can. But we never hold daily rituals or anything. Slayer are not into Christianity in a big way. But all that talk of red books and worshipping Satan sounds pretty religious to me. Isn't Satanism the same old crap in reverse? Yes, it's the same thing. You can get caught up in it just like any religion. What we're attacking, in a roundabout way, is the Christian TV conman. It's unbelievable, the amount of money stolen in the name of Jesus. There are good commercial reasons why the media and the metal industry stay way clear of Satanism, but bands like Metallica, Megadeth and Anthrax just think it's ridiculous. Well, a lot of it is quite ridiculous, but you don't think of it as a pose, it's just something to write about which is way over the top, and is an easy way of offending people.
During a recent interview Slayer guitarist Kerry King talked about censorship, discussing the band's recent live debut in Singapore and being banned to play certain songs by the government due to religious beliefs He said, I think religion is just a big farce, and I think people use it as a crutch as opposed to dealing with the problems in their lives This is what he said We just played Singapore for the first time <clears throat> And like the day before we played, we got there, you know, a couple days early, I guess, do some press or whatever and Day, the night before we played, we found out the government came in and said, okay, here's five songs, you can't play these songs. And I thought to myself, how oppressed is your country when you're scared of music and you think by us playing this song, things are going to happen to your children? It just doesn't make sense to me. But even in the Western world, like in the States or whatever, you always have problems. Well, in the States, yeah, in the States, I know in California we had bus benches, we had like advertisements on bus benches, yeah. and one city had them all pulled. Uh, it, it just it blows me away because common sense to me is like, if that offends you, don't look at it. You know, maybe somebody else won't be offended. Um, and it's just ironic in this day and age, things like that can still happen. Is it still important for a band like Slayer nowadays to, to offend people? I don't even think we're trying to. <laughs> I just think, you know, we're making up music that we like and writing about subjects that we like and it just upsets people. I mean, I knew when we did Jihad that we we're gonna get, yeah. that we we're gonna have to answer for it. And that's okay. But you know, all the other ones, like I didn't write Cult because I wanted to, I, I didn't write Cult because I thought you know, people are just going to say, oh, these guys are the devil, you know, I, cult is how I feel. I think religion is just a big farce and I think, I think people use it as a crutch as opposed to uh, dealing with the problems in their lives, so. Mm. I think a lot of people think that uh, Jihad is, is something like, like Angel of Death Part 2. Yeah, people, I, I knew we were going to get the exact kind of response because, you know, it's fresh. Um, people say, how could you write such a song? And realistically, it's just like reading the newspaper, but it's got music put on top of it, or underneath it. So you got music and you're reading an editorial from, you know, some Muslim country, you know. And because we didn't condemn it, just like we didn't do an angel of death, that makes us, you know, Muslim sympathizers and it's crazy. People, people got too much time on their hands to think about what Slayer's doing. Just listen to the music and have fun, you know. I think people should be allowed to make their own choice. I think people should think for themselves. I think people should listen to music because they like it, not because they're listening to it to pick things out that are wrong with it. You know, I mean, we're all, well, we're not all adults, but there are children on the planet and there are people that, you know, shouldn't even be making decisions that do. But, um, you know, I'm all about answering for what I do. You know, um, like I said about the bus benches, if you don't like music, don't listen to it. If you don't like the TV show, watch another TV show. If you don't like horror movies, go see, you know, click, go see comedy, you know. There's choices. You don't have to listen to this. It's not It's not like when we put out a record and it's mandatory listening for everyone on the planet. It's not like that. You know, you have a choice. Discussing the importance of rhythm guitar, Slayer guitarist Kerry King shared his thoughts on Shredders, saying that their music tends to easily bore him as repetitive. He tells Total Guitar, I think a lot of the shredder type players, and I don't mean everybody, they're not very good songwriters. Players like Fire Malmsteen spend their time perfecting what they do only as far as leads. Ingui had a run where he did some good songs, but when it became just about how many notes he can fit in a millisecond. King added, don't get me wrong, he's an amazing player, but after three songs, I'm done. He'll just keep doing it faster on a different string. Rhythm guitar is where a song is constructed. If there's a song you like, it's because of that rhythm guitar. The lead stuff at the end of the day is just the icing. During the rest of the chat, King discussed hanging out with friends who aren't into metal, explaining how he still likes goofing around with guitar. When people come over and want to listen to music most people like, say Michael Jackson or something, I'll go pick up the guitar and learn the one Eddie Van Halen played on. I'll do stupid shit like that, he said. There's this song called, Push It, which got used in commercials and I think it's funny to put that on when friends are over, pick up a guitar and play along. Everyone in the house just dies laughing. For clarity, you can turn that into a metal song.
Discussing his involvement with Megadeth during the band's early stages, Slayer guitarist Kerry King praised frontman Dave Mustaine's guitar skills, but still said that he can't figure out how anyone put up with Dave's character enough to stay in the band. He told Loudwire, I was one of the lucky people, and there's certainly no offense against Kirk Hammett, Kirk's a wonderful friend of mine, but I was lucky enough to see Metallica with Mustaine. And I say that because it's just a rare thing to be able to say that. I saw them play with Woodstock and I was so intrigued by Mustaine because he was just ripping on guitar and looking out that way somewhere. And I can't do that to this day. So I was just blown away at his guitar playing. And to find out, I think it was through BC Rich, cause we all played BC Rich back then, I found out that Dave was inquiring if I would play. He continued, at the end of the day, I thought, this is a gigantic learning situation. And I also thought people would see me and know me from Slayer. Cause, I mean, we only went to the Bay Area, we only got up there. So I think, if people saw me, it would at least make them think, Slayer. So I had Slayer's best intentions in mind. I didn't go and say, hey, I wanna be a mega death. I don't know how anybody can be in mega death for more than a couple of hours, cause that guy's crazy. Asked if he had any bad experiences with Mustaine during his short time in the band back in 1984, King replied, he was cooler back then. I think there's been a lot of drugs and funny extracurriculars between now and then that helped shape who he is today. But it was good times back then. Playing all the venues Slayer played on just, I don't know, playing different music. His stuff is definitely more, I wouldn't say intricate, cause we've got intricate parts too, but it's just, he writes riffs in a very different perspective than I, even after playing with him for a number of months. I'd still, I wouldn't do it. It's just not my style. In a recent interview, Slayer guitarist Kerry King was asked for his opinion of the Swedish occult rockers Ghost, who share management with Slayer and have toured with King's band in the past, he said. Dude, I love the imagery. I love it, I just hate the fucking music. I like them as people. You know, they've been on many tours with us. I just, I can't get into their music. And I tried. I wanna like them, and I can't. I got their CD from Brian Slagel from Metal Blade. It was when Gary Holt first started playing with us, and I picked up Gary. And I'm, like, Brian said this is awesome, man. So we put it in, going to practice. It wasn't awesome. It wasn't awesome for me. It wasn't awesome for Gary either. I'm, like, well, maybe the first song sucks. And we went to the next one. It's just not for me. I know Ghost is hugely popular, and I'm very happy for their popularity. And, like I said, they're the nicest guys you'll ever meet. It's just not my music. And I've tried so hard. Since then an A-list school from Ghost responded to what Kerry King said, dismissing any bad blood over Kerry King comments, he said. I don't even think that what he said was negative. He just said that he didn't like the band, that he didn't like the music. And you know, we're not for everybody. We've never tried to please everybody, so I didn't even see the negative element in what he said. It doesn't change my opinion on Slayer. I've been a Slayer fan ever since I was a kid, and I still love several of their records with all my heart. For me, it wasn't changing anything. In a recent interview, Slayer guitarist Kerry King was asked for his opinion of the Swedish occult rockers Ghost who share management with Slayer and have toured with King's band in the past, he said. Dude, I love the imagery. I love it, I just hate the fucking music. I like them as people. You know, they've been on many tours with us. I just, I can't get into their music. And I tried. I wanna like them, and I can't. I got their CD from Brian Slagel from Metal Blade. It was when Gary Holt first started playing with us, and I picked up Gary. And I'm, like, Brian said this is awesome, man. So we put it in, going to practice. It wasn't awesome. It wasn't awesome for me. It wasn't awesome for Gary either. I'm, like, well, maybe the first song sucks. And we went to the next one. It's just not for me. I know Ghost is hugely popular, and I'm very happy for their popularity. And, like I said, they're the nicest guys you'll ever meet. It's just not my music. And I've tried so hard. 
Since then a nameless school from Ghost responded to what Carrie King said, dismissing any bad blood over Carrie King comments, he said. I don't even think that what he said was negative. He just said that he didn't like the band, that he didn't like the music. And you know, we're not for everybody. We've never tried to please everybody, so I didn't even see the negative element in what he said. It doesn't change my opinion on Slayer. I've been a Slayer fan ever since I was a kid, and I still love several of their records with all my heart. For me, it wasn't changing anything, 